Hey Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Vaughn. Welcome into today's video where we jump into the latest Atlanta Falcons news and rumors here on a Monday. And let's start with the Bleach Report article that came out over the weekend talking about possible trade destinations for Julio Jones. Now, the Bleach Report article had its number one landing spot for Julio Jones. And of course, amongst all the trade rumors, will he be traded? Will he not be traded? They say Indianapolis is the best fit right now for Julio Jones. They say, Thomas, why Indianapolis? Very simple. One, Indianapolis has $22 million in free cap space. Two, they traded for new starting quarterback in Carson Wentz. And three, the Indianapolis wide receiver depth chart, not that great. I mean, Indianapolis is a pretty darn, darn good football team. They were a good football team last year, and with Wentz, they're expected to go ahead and be better. But they don't have that true number one target. They have T.Y. Hilton, who they re-signed, but in reality, Julio Jones could really make that offense a lot better than people expect it to be this year. So Bleacher Report's uh, Christopher Knox has the write-up on terms of uh, Indy and Julio Jones saying, quote, the Indianapolis Colts should be in on Jones. They're looking to reestablish Carson Wentz as a quality NFL starter while also trying to remain in the AFC playoff field. Jones could be a big contributor for both goals. As Indianapolis receiver depth is questionable, Michael Pittman Jr. appears to be a budding star, but Paris Campbell has struggled to stay healthy, and T.Y. Hilton is set to play on a one-year deal. Affording Jones shouldn't be a significant issue, as Indianapolis has $22.9 million in cap space, end quote. Now, you're probably wondering, all right, so let's say Julio Jones does trade for, or, or Julio Jones is traded to the, the Indianapolis Colts. Thomas, what would a possible trade look like? Well, Bleacher Report has a mock trade for you here. Throw it up on your screen. The Falcons will get a 20 22nd third and a 2023rd second right got that so a third and a second over the next two drafts and the Colts would go ahead and get Julio Jones so not as much as people would expect and this is probably due to the fact that Julio Jones cost a lot of money and to absorb that contract the Falcons would have to kind of take a little bit less than expected to go ahead and get rid of Julio Jones now that trade right there who wins that trade Type C down below for Colts. Type F down below for Falcons on who you think would win the trade if it was exactly what Bleach Report says, right? 2022nd third and a 2023rd second. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Now, why would the Falcons do a trade like this? You're probably asking me, Thomas, why would we get rid of Julio Jones, the best receiver in the National Football League? The Falcons need future cap relief. It's not a scenario where they need cap relief right now, even though cap relief would be helpful because they have one of the worst cap situations in terms of like zero money in the National Football League, but it's future stuff. Julio Jones still has multiple years left on a very expensive, expensive contract, and if you were able to get rid of that contract, it opens up a ton of free agent opportunities going into the 2022 offseason where you would expect Arthur Smith to further put his stamp on this franchise. Right, year one, he started trying to put a stamp on there with the rookie draft class. But year two is really when you need to start making your moves, especially in free agency. And even though we all love Julio Jones, and I'd love to see Julio Jones line up with Calvin Ridley in the new and uh, uh, Smith's new scheme, as well as with Kyle Pitts, but they don't technically need Julio Jones to be successful. I think they can be successful without him. And the contract is just so much money to go ahead and swallow the next couple of years. I think trading Julio Jones would be the smart thing to do. Now, in terms of the compensation, you're saying again, a third and a second isn't a lot to go. Ahead Ahead and get back. That's true, but it's still quite a bit for an aging superstar who is still great, but has struggled with injuries over the past couple of seasons. If you watch the Falcons, you guys know. Julio Jones not being able to stay healthy in the football field and the production has gone down. And plus, they did draft Kyle Pitts, and Calvin Ridley is a budding star in the National Football League. I think he already is. He just gets overshadowed, of course, sitting in the shadow of Julio Jones. And so, in the end, a trade to a team like Indianapolis would make a lot of sense, and I would be 100% for it for the right price in order to get rid of the Julio Jones contract. It's controversial. A lot of Falcon fans in the ATL, I know they want to keep Julio, and that makes sense. But at the same time, you got to think long-term, you got to think of the future of this franchise, and paying Julio Jones a bunch of money is not exactly the smartest thing in order to win long-term. Okay, before we go ahead and keep going here, Falcon fans, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channels. We're trying to get to 2,300 subs on the growing Falcons Today channel here on YouTube. Via Chat Sports, we're trying to give you guys the best one-stop shop in Atlanta, or for Atlanta Falcon fans, covering the Falcons on a daily basis or as often as we can during the week. The more subscribers, the more videos that we can possibly do. So make sure you guys go ahead and go down below and hit that red subscribe button. 2,300 subs is our next goal. And we should be there pretty darn soon. So welcome aboard if you're new. If you are new, go ahead and go down below and subscribe to the channel. I want to move over to an AJC article that came out over the weekend talking about one of the more interesting camp battles that Falcon fans need to keep an eye on going into the 2021 training camp. So, it looks like, according to a report, the Falcons will have an open competition at left guard and really an open offensive line competition because no one's spot technically is guaranteed, according to head coach Arthur Smith. And with the addition of a guy like Jalen Mayfield in the draft, who was drafted out of Michigan as a tackle, it appears now, following the rookie minicamp, that Mayfield will be competing for the left guard slot and inside and instead of an outside 
outside offensive line spot. And with that, there seems to be five options right now competing for a left guard spot in the uh, for, on the Falcons offensive line. We're going to go through each one of them and tell you why again. This is one of the more interesting and more important Falcons uh, training camp depth chart battles that you will be able to watch going into this offseason. So the AJC had a quick write-up here on the candidates for left guard, just so you get familiar with all the names because there's a lot of them. Quote, Falcons offensive line coach Dan Ledford, uh, sorry, Dwayne Ledford mentioned Mayfield along with Josh Andrews, Matt Gono, Drew Dahlman, and Matt Hennessy as possible left guard candidates. He promised to play the best five offensive linemen. End quote. So currently, you take a look at the depth chart, you'd say, okay, Jake Matthews probably pretty locked up at left guard, at, uh, left tackle. Matt Gono is probably your leader in the clubhouse for left guard because he was on the football team last year. Hennessy, again, was mentioned as a possible left guard candidate, but I think he's going to probably be your starting center. At least he should be your starting center. That's why you draft him to replace Alex Mack. Lindstrom seems pretty locked at right guard. Caleb McGarry is also, I would say, locked at right tackle, but there's no reason why he couldn't lose out to Jalen Mayfield if Mayfield wants to go back to right tackle or they want Mayfield to go back to right tackle. And order to go ahead and have the best five guys in front of Matt Ryan protecting him. This, again, offensive line is the camp battle to watch this offseason. There's a lot of different position groups you can sit back and say, oh, what are they going to do at a running back? Oh, what are they going to do at safety? What are they going to do at cornerback? No. Your number one position battle, number one position group to watch going into training camp is the offensive line for the reasons we just stated. There's a bunch of guys competing for five slots. And even though we expect guys like Jake Matthews to be a starter, there's no guarantee that Matt Hennessy is going to win the center job. There's no guarantee that Matt Gono is going to go ahead and win the uh, win, win, win the left guard slot. And even though you think Lindstrom is locked up at right guard, right tackle is still yet to be seen because apparently they aren't total, uh, totally thrilled and bought into a uh, third-year guy, and I guess now third-year guy, right, Caleb McGarry. And so as you get ready for the training camp and get ready for the the offseason offensive line is definitely a spot to go ahead and watch because Matt Ryan's been hit a ton this team has been unable to protect him for the, I mean the vast majority of his career but really the past couple of years and so the best five in front of him are going to give the uh, the uh, Atlanta Falcons the best chance to go ahead and be successful going into the 2021 season and hopefully beyond it's a young group which is good minus Jake Matthews that's important to go ahead and note but they need to be consistent they need to stay healthy and be consistent on the football field in order for this team to have a lot more success than people are predicting in 2021 plus just being able to create some running lanes would be helpful as well. Something they were unable to do a lot last year. I know they have a lot of good running backs, but still creating open running lanes again, giving Matt Ryan a running game behind him would give you just an add to the addition of having good pass rushers, which is important right now in the ATL. What's your level of confidence in the Falcons' offensive line going into 2021? How confident are you that Atlanta's going to be able to have a top 10 offensive line? They won't be top 5, but maybe top 10? If you're saying they're not going to be you're not confident at all, then type 1 down below. It means you're not confident. If you're super confident, like it's going to be the best offensive line ever, type 10 down below. I currently sit about... Probably a six because I want to see who's going to win these starting jobs. But the hope is, again, that the best five are going to win, as you expect them to, as they should. And then going into this uh, start of the, the uh, new season, they're able to protect Matt Ryan a lot better than they have been able to do the past couple of years. So I would say six on a scale of one to ten in my confidence in the Falcons offensive line. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section right now. Okay, before we go ahead and end again, make sure you guys are subscribed to Atlanta Falcons today. We're trying to grow this channel, right? We're trying to get to 2,300 subs. So if you're brand new, I know, welcome in. Of course, you guys probably recognize my face. That's fine. Go down below and hit the red subscribe button. That way we can go ahead and get you guys the latest up-to-date Falcons news and rumors. Our goal here on the channel is to be, one, free, as of course we are on YouTube, but two, give you guys one-stop shop for quick updates on everything regarding the Falcons and the ATL. Ultimate for today here on Atlanta Falcons Today, I'm your host, Thomas Mott, signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.